good well i don't know if it's an afternoon evening or morning whenever you see this but anyways welcome to episode 14 i actually have to check yeah you think i would have that figured by now (laughs) welcome to episode 14 of the sounds legit podcast you know who i am you've been more or less tolerating my rantings for the past 10 episodes but anyways how are you are you doing you all right Oh man, I just got up from a nap and I, well, I, I played football earlier today and I was inspired, you know. Uh, the Euro Cup is still on. I've been watching the matches, getting all fired up. I was like, I could do better than these professionals that have paid millions of pounds or euros that I'm going to go to a, like a park near, my, near where I live and just play football. I'll show them. Yeah, and then, then, then they, they'll, they'll, they'll recruit me to their expensive leagues at the age of like 30 two or something i might as well be 90 to those people i know football sunday i didn't play last week so i had to play today and uh i think i normally play football with my colleagues on mondays but because of the euro cup nobody wanted to turn up so there's only three of us and we're like fuck that so i had to play football today and it was good i was just really focused uh bear in mind i will be talking a lot about football in this one so uh Soccer to you, North Americans out there. I mean, the few of you that will probably discover this podcast on iTunes. Um, but to us in the UK, good old blighty, good old blighty. Uh, we call it football. Um, yeah, that that's what I'm going to talk about. So, if you're not sports inclined, you might want to give this one a skip. But you know, it's a work in progress. You might want to listen, sit around, have a Jack Daniels or cognac. Whatever f- uh, floats your boat. Um, but no, no, no. I, I played football today and it was really good. I think my mind just, it's like one of those things about mirror neurons that, you know, it's why toddlers eventually learn to walk because even from a young age, the brain is trying to mirror what it sees in the world. So if you're this baby and you see these giants that, you know, you kind of instinctu- instinctually know are your parents. Uh, you're going to start walking as well. Anyways, so for me, I went to play football this morning. It was good. I just kept my cool. Things. I only lost it a couple of times because some guys are just, <sighs> you pass the ball to them. You win the ball and you pass it to them and they don't make the run. You're like, what the fuck? Come on, you know. Lost my shit a couple of, well, two or three times. Most of the time I was cool. and even managed to score a goal, you know. It's just intensely focused. And I'm like, whew. A few times I almost gassed out. I was like, okay, just... Just take it easy. No one knows you. <laughs> no one knows you're dying. Your heart's still beating. You're, you know, you're not going to collapse. Just take it easy. So, yeah, sometimes I I think I should probably just warm up um, better because I mean, the first 15 minutes, I was just like, what the fuck am I doing? And then afterwards, I did drink some water, hydrated a bit, and I, got, I, I became better. Yeah, I played really well, actually, so I'm, I'm quite cool. So, no, I... Uh, Got home, showered. I actually went out to buy some food because I looked at my kitchen and I was like, oh, God, I can't I can't stand anymore. I'm not going to just stand in the kitchen for another hour cooking. I was like, fuck it. So I outsourced. I went, uh, got me some Chinese food. Uh, this rather nice, uh, well, I don't know, I think it's a restaurant. It's a trendy restaurant anyway. Got me some braised pork. I love that shit. And... Ironically, I got me so Why am I talking about Why am I even talking about that? Anyways, my point is, I uh, got home, took a nap, woke up, had a shot of coffee. So, you know, my plan is to do this. And even getting up, I was just like, my bones hurt so much. I'm getting old, man. The other thing I do like is that my muscles don't hurt. Uh, I don't feel sore. Um, and I think it's mostly because of the magnesium I supplement. I supplement ionic magnesium. I don't know why I'm talking about that. I think if you listen to episode two, where I rant at all about football playing, coffee drinking, LT heat eating, you would probably see that. But anyways, uh, yeah, so the Euros are still on. And uh, I think we're entering the third stage today. And uh, yeah, so I, I was watching a couple of matches over the weekend and, you know, it's just absolutely distraught had the performance of some of the teams, especially like Portugal. I think Portugal was playing Austria yesterday. And I, I was playing XCOM too because I do like a Let's Play series. By the way, I do a Let's Play series on YouTube um, if you want to check it out. My channel's Bad Forever 2001. I do Let's Play. Well, I'm just doing a Let's Play video 
at the moment because I still haven't finished XCOM 2, the base game of it, even though there's a DLC that's coming out. Uh, well, it's already out, and I, I didn't, I'm never sure I'm going to play that because I'm like, I want to play something else. Uh, so I'm playing XCOM 2, and I used to make anime music videos, allegedly. I don't know why I said that. I do know why I said that, but you don't know why I said that. I'm not going to explain it now. <laughs> but anyways, I, I uh, make anime music videos as well, uh, just for fun. I don't, you know, make money off it. I don't want to make money off it. It's other people's properties, essentially. So, uh, but yeah, you can check that out there. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was doing that. So by the time I got back to the Pulse Crew match, and I was just like, okay, what's happening? It was nil nil. And apparently, uh, one of the star players, Cristiano Ronaldo, has been having an absolutely horrific day. Uh, so that has been, you know, very interesting. It's like he's supposed to be like one of the best players on the planet, and even now, even then, he's still having issues. So yeah, but the thing I did notice was like, you know, like if you're, have you ever, if you've ever been in the stadium, I've only been in the stadium once actually, and I was back in the day, back in Nigeria actually. Um, I think my stepdad at the time. Uh, at the time, it's like I swapped step that. But anyways, he helped build the stadium, so he got free tickets to watch the final of the 1995 Under-17 World Cup Championships. So I went to my mom and my cousin and everyone. We went to watch the match. I think it was Japan versus Egypt or something. You know, which was quite nice. You know, uh, it's very interesting when you walk into the stadiums. And then if you ever watch football on telly. You you just don't think about the sheer fact that you only get in a comment commentary because you are watching it on, on the telly. But uh once you're in the stadium, you're just watching people play football and it was bizarre. I remember once, oh I've been in the stadium twice actually, because during the twenty twelve Olympics, uh, my girlfriend and I at the time we went up to Manchester. Uh she drove us up. Uh, she was awesome. She drove us all the way, she's insane. And we watched the uh Oddly enough, Japan versus Egypt again. So wait, maybe it wasn't Japan versus Egypt in '95. Was Japan versus someone for sure? Uh, anyway, so we watched the uh, Japan versus Egypt match. Uh, Egypt match, and it was very interesting. I just sat there and I was like, "There's something missing." Then I realized, yeah, of course, it's the commentary. <laughs> there is no, there is no commentator that's just uh, sounding off. Uh, hang on, let me just reduce the gain on this thing. Uh, there, there wasn't any commentator talking so that felt a bit odd I was like this feels vaguely empty and we were sat behind one of the team's goalposts so it was very interesting um, had like a weird kind of distance issue because if someone played the ball in the air you're not entirely sure really in the first three seconds where the ball is going so you see the ball and nope, it comes closer to you ah so that, that's where it's going but anyways my point being uh, I was watching the Portugal-Austria match and I just, <laughs> I noticed like, uh, you know, like if you're in the stadium, and I think that was my original point, you uh, you see those dudes, those stewards, uh, that just stand there, they're never looking at the game, and it always fascinates me, you know, and I want to think about those dudes, I'm like, okay, fine, for sure it means they absolutely don't give zero fucks about football, because <laughs> they're just perfectly content to look at people, and never bother watching the game. And I want. Sometimes I like to wonder. It's like I wonder if this guy's just like. I wonder what kind of sports they're into, and that said, you know, I mean, if I did that job, I'll just have like podcasts on my phone going all the time, you know, because I mean, it's like you can talk to anyone. The entire stadium just makes noise. Everyone's rowdy. Everyone's like, you know, constantly screaming and whatnot. So you wouldn't even, you know, there's there's no point talking to people. So I'll just have like, uh, my my podcast series going. I usually try to load up about 40 hours of like podcasts just on any given time. But yeah, sometimes I wonder, right? I really wonder, like, <laughs> like if all the stewards that, that don't even watch the game are even human, you know? I I mean, they just, <laughs> they just stand there looking the other way. They're not even paying attention to the game. And, you know, maybe, maybe what I think they are, you know, in, sometimes when I think about it, I'm like, maybe what if they just like, like fucking battle androids you know like fucking next level robotics um from that company i think it was boston dynamics that google bought to build robots for god knows what i mean has anyone even thought about that i mean uh, there are some of those uh you've seen those robot dog thingies that 
freaked me the hell out the way they move. It's just like you're watching an aberration of nature. Have you seen those videos like on YouTube about those dogs? Where apparently they were designing them like they're not dogs, they're robots, right? But they look like fucking dogs. They have four legs and they all, they make this kind of weird noise and it's just constant. Like I'm like, okay, it's okay for now. Can you imagine maybe 50 years time and they've perfected that particular technology? You can have those things hunt people. I mean, that's fucking scary that we're going to design stuff that has some kind of weird almost sentient AI, if not sentient AI outright, just to kill people. That is very weird. I mean, it kind of reminds me of Dune. Like, uh, I don't really know much about it because I've, I've, I've watched, like, the TV show, I think the one that came out in 2000. A buddy of mine has actually read the books, and he and I discussed this briefly at the time, and we're talking about how, like, um, you know, in that universe, they outlawed what they called uh, thinking machines. So more or less AI, because apparently there was this massive war humans had with a rogue ai element that just went crazy and took over entire planetary like sectors and whatnot so after they defeated the ai they was like listen nobody built sentient shit ever again (laughs) you know but yeah so going back to the stewards i mean like sometimes i think like maybe those guys are just like you know robots that you know you know they're like there for crowd control but we don't know until it gets really really bad and yeah i mean they just stand it man and i don't trust them i don't trust them like okay fine you you're you're in a stadium you're watching football uh well you're watching football but those guys they are not watching football obviously they have to look at the crowd so they can tackle anyone to the ground if anyone runs past i wonder if excuse me (coughs) sorry i had to clear my throat there so i had to mute my mic no, but I wonder, man. Imagine if those guys were like actual robots, right? Just, just bear with me on this one. Just bear with me. Let's just imagine they're actually like military-grade battle droids that, you know, when not, when not activated, they're like they appear human. But I mean, if you look at those stewards in the stadium, they just stand there, just not looking the other way, and I'm like, Jesus. I mean, yeah. So imagine they're like actually battle droids heavily armed to the fucking balls, man, with laser batteries, like multi-chain miniguns, miniature antipersonal mines, and at least one gas-powered pneumatic piston, man, or prosthetic limb. Just imagine like fucking gorilla, like <laughs> imagine like triggering one of those stewards and, you know, fine, you just, it's eye, one of his eyes just opens up into like multiple lenses and you just see like laser lights coming out of them. His right arm just literally just blows up like the fucking incredible walk, all vanian shit. And he just slaps like this massive arm that even while standing, it's like the fist is constantly on the ground because you just can't hold it out right. And then the other arm just opens up into like a fucking minigun. <laughs> and then on his shoulder blades, you get like those guns that just come out. Like, have you ever watched The Predator? Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, uh, the original Predator movie. You know the, those hunter AI thingies. Those guys. I mean, I should talk about those guys. It'd be weird. Um, if you ever watch Predator, like, especially the Arnie, the Arnie Schwarzenegger one. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, if you ever watch that, you notice like the alien just he has this gun, shoulder mounted, personal blaster thing, and just shoots balls of plasma or something at people. So imagine that on this steward, right? That it has a some kind of shoulder mounted thing, and that's like, yeah, just imagine like it has a like predator, like a smaller version of that predator mounted. Um, <clears throat> bloody hell. Sorry, hang on, just gonna drink some water. Hang on. Honestly, Jesus Christ. Ah, apologies for that. So, where was I? Oh, and I have to cough again. (coughs) All day, I was fine. All day, and I'm coughing constantly. (sighs) So imagine that, right? So, when they're activated, this this stewards in a football stadium, they look normal. They appear to be human. Uh, But when things start to get fucking crazy, like I said... You know, one of the uh, right, the right eye just opens up into like five different patches of lenses to just take different types of sensor data. Right arm just inverts itself into a minigun, 
shoulder mounted <laughs> laser gun is there like laser cannon and then the right arm just literally opens up into this massive steroided motherfucking hulk arm it just fucking rips ripples of muscle i mean even like 17 different muscle groups that you know we don't even know what they're called <laughs> imagine like so that you have this kind of half weird cyborgy thing just standing and like just ready to get ready to fuck anyone that comes close and you know I, yeah like i said those two are essentially like state-of-the-art battle droids just wine we're just waiting for for just the odd unruly fan to just close in for for a tackle um i mean yeah <laughs> ufo doesn't fuck around man I mean, I reckon, I reckon this 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 steward droid bots have like three main threat assessment levels. You know, like the first one being a single high powered like laser cannon shot that just goes through someone's thighs. I mean, just enough to like open and cauterize the wounds at the same time. In and out, just like you know, so it's just enough to debilitate whoever's running from the stands. You know, and <laughs> but yeah, at least that would stop the aggressor, right? That would, that would stop the person. I reckon all you need is one or three of those, you know, three examples of, you know, people's muscle tissue just being shown off with these cannons. You know, can you imagine, like, like so imagine, like, a like during the England-Russia game where the, the English fans and Russian fans were going at it. Now imagine the entire stadium just fucking descending into chaos and people just falling off the stands, just charging at the pitch. Maybe they want to do harm to the players. And you just have all these stewards, just each and every one of them just activating by themselves, just going through different assaulting threat levels and everything. <laughs> and then you just see laser kind of just... <laughs> And that's just the opening salvo, you know? So, I mean, yeah. So, like I said, all you need is just maybe a couple of examples of, like, you're you, you, charging of the sta- stance. You're some hooligan, right? You're like, oh, we're going to fight the Russians, but we're going to go in the pitch. So, you there's three guys in front of you, right? They jump on the stand, and because of this whole mob mentality, mentality you decide to join them. So you're charging past the stewards, but you see, start noticing something weird about the stewards, and like one of them just, you know, the, the, one of the guys on the right just gets fucking launched <laughs> into like the upper levels from this kind of weird thing that used to be a human and now has this massive arm to just backhanded this guy into like <laughs> the second story of like seatings. And then you look to your left, you see some another thing that used to be human just like just shooting people left and right and then in front of you the one in front of you is just like scanning you with a laser and just shoots like <laughs> muscle tissue off your left shoulder you just like whoosh, you know just like that i mean yeah that that's like you know so you get that but <clears throat> so level two right so level one is you get like this battle cannon predator kind of cannon thing like a smaller version of just shooting laser blast at people and then you get level two level two is the chain gun right and i thought about it before i actually um so that i recorded i was like okay fine 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 you don't want to exactly just murder people outright because hey it's a football game you know it's like a fucking south america so i mean south korea the dmz between the north and the south where literally it's so fucking mined out at this point you know jesus let's not even get into that but anyways so you don't want to just kill people outright because i don't want this particular episode to be macabre um so i was thinking about how instead of actual like lead casings for the like you know like your normal standard bullets how about you know i how about these droids right instead of just blasting into a lupus with you know just actually using bullet casings how about we just put like maybe low doses of ecstasy or chloroform in those things i mean i'm more into like chloroform because you know it's like it's a kind of like uh <laughs> chain fed chloroform filled bullets that just upon impact just detonates and it just detonates into this mist of vapor um with chloroform so you instantly just yeah, you know what happens if you're sniffing cl- chloroform i mean at least according to me what i noticed in movies was if you get hit with chloroform you know people just take you out you know you just fall asleep so i figured that's a less lethal way of going about this so level two threat assessments with this battle droid stewards just chain guns absolutely filled with with you know just filled with chloroform bullets and just mowing people down <laughs> 
<laughs> I just imagine it now it's just like you got like this fucking battle droid level two threat assessment activated thing just like just backhanding people left and right with this fucking all calm and then in the left time it's just like just mowing people down just seeing like steams of chloroform filling people's face and people just going out just like that people are taking out and <laughs> oh man and you know at the same time you would have like um the, these battle droids just have like speakers opening up the back of the back their whatever their backs are called you know just blaring out like you, you ever seen um what did i what did i see this from um this movie is it a movie uh, i think what's it called what's it called what's it called howard hughes movie the breakfast club I think towards the end, where the guy's walking through the park and that song comes in, it's like, don't you forget about me, you know? <laughs> you just have, like, each of the <laughs> robots playing some kind of weird song as they're mowing people down <laughs> with bullet cases of chloroform. <laughs> and also still, like, seriously backhanding people uh, with the pneumatic arms or whatever. Oh, I can just see that now. It's like, don't you forget about me. <laughs> I actually like that song. That's a really good song. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, But no. Uh, yeah, like I said, no one told those people to get onto the page. So, hey, it's not my fault. And then provided, like I said, those fans actually do zerg onto the page. And the droids can literally start mauling people with their inbuilt melee weapons. I mean, that's level three for you. You know, like I said, just imagine... It's hit to be just like the way a golfer swings a club, <laughs> like Tiger Woods on a good day. But imagine sort of like a golf a golf iron and the ball being launched at like God knows how many miles per hour. It's just people, man. Like you ever seen the Lord of the Rings? Like the first movie where I think that was the the opening battle scene where you got the humans, the elves, and the dwarves, I guess. Uh, just charging all these orcs and trolls and whatnot. And everything's going well. Everything's going well until, like, Sauron just steps onto the pitch, you know. It's, like, towering above everyone. The guy's, like, eight feet tall, and it's just armed to the fucking balls, <laughs> armed to the fucking tits with, like, chain armor. It's got this awesome cape. I mean, the guy's so fucking badass. You never get to see his face. You ever noticed? You never get to see Sauron's face throughout the entire trilogy just this fucking weird eye anyways the guy just you know he has this you know powered by this one evil ring of course he just takes his battle mace and he's just mowing entire squads of fucking troops like i'm like yeah that's what i'm imagining with this fucking level three threat assessment activated droids just and meanwhile just blasting this awesome music at the same time so it's like this weird paradox of extreme violence <laughs> and soothing music oh man well yeah um like i said you know hey i don't i don't i <laughs> i'm not the one that told you know i'm not the one that have people running away from the seats you know when they said listen you came to watch a game just calm the fuck down just relax i mean can you imagine the entire stadium just fucking losing its shit it's just pure anarchy, and you have this battle droids just trying to protect the, the football players who are just cowering in the middle of the pitch, just crying <laughs> at the sheer violence. It reminds me of this uh, Rick and Morty episode where I think Rick and Morty have to, in a way, because his car battery, um, whatever, his car battery dies. So it turns out the battery that's powering the car is actually like this miniature universe. So Rick is like, okay, we need to go fix this. So they actually shrunk themselves and literally got into the battery, which is like this other universe to go investigate. Why? Well, meanwhile, because uh, Morty's sister, Summer, came, came out with them. She was hanging out with them. He didn't want Summer to come because he didn't trust her, didn't like her. So he said, okay, Summer, stay in the car. And then told the car, AI, saying, listen, keep Summer safe. <laughs> And the car was like, acknowledged, keep summer safe. And it was just the entire episode is about how people are trying to get some out of the car and the car just absolutely annihilating anyone that comes close. At the same time, it, every single time the car would kill someone, it would say, keep summer safe. <laughs> I don't want to give, I mean, I don't want to give that much away, but again, Rick and Morty. 
the most amazing TV show ever, Adult Swim. I mean, they're not paying me for this. I don't want to be paid for this. I'm just giving it out there. If you haven't seen it, please, please just watch, watch, just watch one episode. Just one episode of Rick and Morty. Just one. That's all you need. That's all you need. It's amazing. Oh, man. <clears throat> well, yeah. Uh, regarding the, the England-Russia fans that, that went to war, I mean, I, want, I wonder, I mean, what started that fucking fire? I mean, come on, it's like, it's not like they, they don't even understand the language, you know? I mean, one side's English, the other side's Russian. I mean, what the fuck? The guy's like, British news, you're like, I can't fucking hear you, mate. You know, it's like, how do you fight someone that doesn't even understand what the fuck you're saying? I mean, yeah, I understand if you're in the military and maybe that's perfect. Maybe I thought about this wrong. But anyways, my point being, you're not in the military. You guys are watching a football game for fuck's sake, you know? What the fuck? I, it's just, I wish, it's just sometimes I wish if I was like, if I actually met a genie and says, okay, three wishes, what's one of my wishes? My One of my, my wishes would be, I want to be present for every significant historical event since the dawn of time, you know, which would basically be like a fucking long drawn wish. And <laughs> maybe about like two years of just cycling through history, I'll probably get to 2016, probably at the end of my wish, and I'll just be there. You know, between these two different aisles at the stadium at the England Russia game that happened almost two weeks ago, just to be there when maybe one of those Russians, maybe the <laughs> the uh, the English fans have been going nuts because England scored, and everyone's like, you know, the English fans are fucking nuts, they're fucking crazy, and then the Russians <laughs> they're just you know brooding because they're fucking losing against the English, and then the Russians scored at like the eighty seventh minute or something fucking crazy like that, and then these two fans just look at each other. Again, I just want to be there. I want to see what exactly caused that fucking fire. I mean, for real, you've got to be, you have to be a total asshole to get to fight, to get into a fight with someone who doesn't even speak the language. I mean, doesn't that detract from the fight? I mean, if, if the person you're, you're slugging it out with doesn't even have a fucking clue about the insults you're throwing at them, because you never know, you never, and besides, you never find women fighting each other en masse Especially not over something as banal as football. Just turned out there, yeah? You know. Which reminds me, what do women fight over? Handbags? Ha! <laughs> okay, no. That was, that was derogatory. Listen, I'm just joking here. I'm just... I'm, I'm facetious, you know? That, I'm facetious. That That's that's my game here. I mean, I, I just say shit. I talk shit. So it sounds fucking legit. Maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, does, does not even dampen the sheer fact that you know, the, the effective, effectiveness of the conflict. I mean, Jesus Christ. I caught a glimpse of the fallout on the news and, and I was just sat there saying, listen, these guys are going to war over football right now. I mean, they, they're fighting because of football, you know. And I, I don't even... I, I, it's like it's fucking football, you know. Uh, apparently, both England and Russia... Uh, the, Rus- the English Federation of Football and the Russian Federation of Football, whatever, um, they got, I think they got fined, and UEFA warned that they could toss out both teams uh, from the tournament, uh, you know, and I'm like, wait, how is it a fucking fault that the fans are nuts, you know? I mean, if your fans are assholes, wait, how do you, you can't control them. So what the fuck, you know? And it is re- this is one of the reasons why I never watch football in the first place. Uh, well, in public anyway. I mean, I watch football personally, but I don't watch it in public, uh, especially when England's playing. I do not fucking watch football in public. If you go to a pub, it's fucking, it's a nightmare. It's a fucking nightmare. And I say this because it reminds me of the 2010 World Cup um, where a friend of mine, you know, she, she actually want, you know, insisted actually that we watch the England versus USA game, um, you know, as opposed to just watching it at my, my place because I lived in a house here at the time, you know, and my housemate had this massive fucking big TV literally in the, in the living room. There were chairs everywhere, couch, there was a sofa. I mean, it was just so comfortable to just watch the game there. But no, she insisted we go to a pub to watch this. I mean, I, I was like, okay, cool. Let's just, just, let's just, let's just get there. Uh, yeah, we, we got there, all right? And... Uh, was already action packed with shirtless like pasty <laughs> white dudes <laughs> oh man uh just they were all fucking drunk 
uh, constantly yelling, come on, England, come on, England. And, you know, for, on occasion when, you know, Wayne Rooney would get the ball, he'd be like, Rooney, Rooney, Rooney. I mean, I was like, oh, God, Jesus Christ. I mean, hey, that was some pr- fucking tribal, primitive, primal shit right there. And I was like, fuck, we have to do this now, you know. And apart from being blinded by the artificial sun glare from this, like, these dudes are just, I mean, those kind of dudes you like, dude, okay, you need to get a suntan because, I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> they were just all shirtless in indoors. And I'm like, okay, and, you know, hey, I'm not into dudes, but it, whatever, man. I mean, a bunch of dudes were just like, and that's the thing that also bothered me. And I think I, I mentioned this episode too, is that some of these guys were younger than me and they, were, they had fucking beer guts, man. I'm like, yikes, what is your 30s going to look like, you know? But anyways, we got through that. We, 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 my, my mate and I, we, you know, we, we, we somehow got, you know, to the bar, you know, and I, yeah, because I was like, listen, if, if we're going to do this, I'm not going to be fucking sober for this. I mean, I, I need to drink something. I honestly need to drink, uh, drink something. So we, we went to the bar and about 15 minutes of just being elbowed, screamed over, stepped on and occasional drinks would just be splashed. <laughs> with alarming consistency and accuracy over our heads you know this was, this was just at the bar and I was just like oh for fuck's sake and on occasion when people would be screaming you, co- you couldn't help but just be absolutely blasted by you know concerning levels of halitosis mixed in with Carlsberg beer breath I mean yeah okay fine you know, we got our drinks in the end we managed to break free from the lynch mob esque mosh pit that was the cue for the bar uh, <laughs> we then decided to go closer to one of the screens, one of the biggest screens, if I recall, yeah, uh, to at least ascertain just what the fuck was going on. And yeah, we, we got close to this particular cauldron of you know, fanatical just zealots. I mean, you should have seen this. These guys were nuts. And, you know, otherwise, I mean, these guys, yeah, and th- th- this is your English sports fan club, right? So I heard of the mob just in front of the screen, right? You know, and just, just, just ahead of the screen, um, we saw these four young people and they look like, you know, students and well I thought so anyway. Ah, oh, sorry, throat's dry, I'm just gonna get a swig of water. Sorry. Just talking for an hour is fucking difficult. Alright. Lubricated. Let's get back into this. So yeah. Right in front of the screen were these four students and there was something pe- 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 particularly interesting about that i couldn't put my finger on it you know i was just trying to keep my drink stable listen by this time we're we're kettled in to this support supporting group like the, the this fan club or whatever we got there and within minutes people were behind us we couldn't escape and i was like shit we're gonna be standing here with my drink surrounded by other people most of them shirtless some of them stank a bit you know i'm not gonna lie and people were just screaming constantly off the top of their fucking voice. Um, especially if the USA did something, people were like, boo, and they're just going fucking crazy. So, um, we're watching this game, and I didn't really think it was that important, really, until the United States scored. And when that happened, uh, the students, whom, you know, to the shock and horror, you know, and mine started yelling out the stereotypical USA, USA, USA. And I was like, oh my fucking God, no. <laughs> you know, they were literally surrounded by fucking barbarians. And, you know, it, it's just this tiny island of Americans in the middle of like what could be, you know, it's like fucking the old place is full of you know English fans and everything and I was like no don't do that and honestly I mean <laughs> seriously you sh- should have been there I mean the moment the, the the American team scored and the American students started screaming out and celebrating they were instantly booed down by the English supporters in a rapidly changing stance towards hostility people started throwing beer quantities of snacks and whatnot and insults their way i mean yeah i would not even i wouldn't even care i wouldn't even have cared that much waiting for the annoying fact that whenever anything was launched because hey i'm in the middle of a fucking crowd the contours of such projectiles you know just also landed on me 
So I'm talking about beer, fucking just sl- being fucking sloshed over my head, fucking crisps, all that shit, all of that, because I was stupid enough to go watch an England game outside uh, the absolute safety of my home at the time. And I'm like, dude, you know, I thought, this is it. I'm going to fucking die. Yeah, this was six years ago. So I was 26 uh, or 27, actually. Never mind the American students that I'm sure that we're going to fucking get killed. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I'm in the middle of, like, I'm near ground zero right now. I'm going to fucking die because, you know, um, my friend wanted to go watch the, the England game in a pub instead of watching it at my place where we would have been well fed, silent, sitting down, comfy. We could actually hear what's happening on the screen. We can see what's happening on the screen. We didn't have to stand. Nobody wants to kill us. Nobody wants to kill anyone in there. We could have always just easily have used the bathroom, everything, all this creature comforts. But my friend's like, no, let's go watch it in a fucking pub. I'm like, and yeah, I was going to die, you know. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you would think, oh yeah, I'm being dramatic, but you had to be there. It was insane. I mean, I literally considered how like uh, a newspaper headline would basically um, cover the or the the events uh, about to unfold. I mean, uh, of the American students, there would be nothing left for sure. You know, it's just like one of those kind of. You ever seen like uh, any zombie movie where you ha- you have like a mob of zombies just descend upon a hapless victim? Because normally, if it's like in a one case uh, zombie, right? If if like one zombie uh, or two zombies takes out. A victim. There's usually stuff there or left behind because at some point, I think <laughs> they're very weirdly we're odd. Because I, I watch a lot of zombie movies, but at least from what I've learned from watching zombie movies, uh, if one of two zombies cat c- get someone, they yeah they kill the person and they feast on the person and then they just get up and walk away at some point because maybe the, the body is too cold or whatnot. But if it's a horde that gets a victim, there's usually nothing left. And I was just thinking, yeah. Seconds before I die, those guys for sure, there will be nothing left because they're going to get fucking lynched. And then for me, cause I just happened to be in a way uh, innocent bystander. And I was thinking about how like the, the local newspaper would 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 cover the whole thing. <laughs> Maybe just traces of clothing scattered all over the place or something. Oh, man. I mean, you could probably just find the imprints on the couches. <laughs> after the facts. <laughs> oh, for me. Shit, I don't know. I thought I'd be one of those innocent bystanders that just got caught out. Uh, like, you know, one of those victims, you, like I said, you read about in an article just to try and get some sympathy uh, from the readership as to, you know, you know, as to the massacre that was supposed to be an like a World Cup football match between England and the United States of America. Fuck yeah. I mean, honestly, in, in a sort of bow-inducing terror that was pushing shit violently against my fucking asshole and i'm sorry to be so graphic (laughs) like i said you've had to be there you had to be there i literally just glared at my body and she saw what i meant with it i mean i was just looking at her you know she wasn't looking at me at first but at some point at some point her brain just just figured it out okay you know i think this guy you know she just looked at me and i looked and i was like with my eyes because heaven forbid i wasn't just gonna just say anything you know, straight away, because I'm like, we could be fucking home right now, watching the fucking game. But now we're here, and now we're going to die, you know. And she <laughs> she didn't, and it was so interesting, because she saw this weird terror in my eyes, and she just nodded, and she's like, yeah, I, I get you, dude. I got you, you know. I was glaring at her, and she saw what I meant with it. I mean, you don't even have to be a psychic to understand what I was trying to communicate to her non-verbally for the safe, for our safety anyway, because we're smack bang in the middle of this shit. And then literally the time I was like, fuck this shit. You know, that said, I had to like raise and nod my head. Like I, I raised and lowered my, put my eyebrows literally, you know, just to emphasize <laughs> what I was trying to say. You know, the sheer fact that we could have watched this shit at home. Now we're all going to fucking die horribly, and it's entirely your fucking fault. Um, to her credit, I mean, I reckon she just kind of agreed with me and just smiled. I mean, a nervous one, no less. Cause, I mean, yeah, she she <laughs> she had to put she had to put on a brave face, not to entirely, you know, 
lose her composure and tried not to wince when the next beer barrage flew over her head, <laughs> partially drenching her blonde hair <laughs> with stale lager. <laughs> Oh, man. But okay, the, re- the reason why I'm alive, telling you this anyway, um, telling you this now, is the sheer fact that England equalized, yeah? And thank fucking God for that. Uh, England equalized, uh, much to mine and the American students' relief. That's another shot at life. And my own personal personal joy of perhaps actually reaching the age of 30 after all. <laughs> So I was like, oh, God, if I can just survive this, I can do so much. I just want to, you know, I was 27 at the time. I was like, can I just be 30, you know, and die then, you know? <laughs> I'm supposed to die horribly on some battlefield somewhere, which would have been progressively worse anyway. But in a in a English football match, World Cup thing, that could have totally avoided Um but yeah, <laughs> the fans lost their shit, obviously. Uh, but in a good way, um, this get, uh, dudes are just hugging each other, more beers consumed, and Rune, Rune, Rune being yelled at constantly out loud. Yeah, we got out. We got out alive. All right, yeah. Um, yeah, and after <laughs> uh, we reached like a, a decent um, escape velocity, like. Uh, like acceptable levels of an escape velocity trajectory because we just literally breeze walked out of there. I recall turning over to my buddy and uh, I just told her, listen, um, you know, I would, I would never do that shit ever again. You know, I would never, ever even bother. Ever. No, seriously, to this day, it's one of my policies now because it was so horrible. It was so absolutely fucking horrible that there's no way I'd watch England playing in a pub. And she was like, oh, it wasn't that bad, you know. <laughs> even as, <laughs> even as the, the beer that was spilt on us was like, just gently steaming off into the sunlight. <laughs> Dude, fuck that. Fuck that. There's no way I'm fucking doing that ever again. Oh, man. You know. God. And to be honest, I find it ironic, um, like, how for the levels of fanatical support, the English team get from their fans that would you 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 would have thought from that fucking crazy level of support that that would translate like into I don't know because if you have people like just they're so crazy you know the English fans are known infamously throughout the world as just a war band of rabble rousers wherever they go where when there's a World Cup 2010 South Africa they were there. Uh, 2014 in Brazil, some of them were there and in France, which is literally just a hop across the English Channel they just invade they are, they, they they drink, they get loud they get crazy and then they want to fight people you know and they're known for this and you would have thought, if you have such fanatical fans, you would have thought like you would expect the football team itself to be like, I don't know, like a Brazil or a Germany or <coughs> Even an Italian football team, you would, that's what you'd expect from such in- amped levels of support. But, you know, it's just like the way, like, you know, they say, like, dogs kind of imitate the personalities of their owners. So if you're, like, a very confident person, your dog kind of feeds off that and also becomes confident. But if you were, like, just, like, you know, very insecure, you have self-esteem issues and whatnot, your dog mirrors the same way. So it's, that's what I was thinking about. I was like, you would expect that, that... To have such fanatical football fans, you would have this awesome football team that is unbeaten. That you know is just freaking awesome. That, but yeah, that that's 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 not what's happening. You know, and I, and I kind of feel sorry for these fans because they, I think they deserve better, to be honest. And I I now wonder if if there is some kind of weird inverse relationship between the exceedingly high support. Um, from the fans, uh, from English, from English football fans, and the tepid on pitch performance put in by the actual football team. You have to, you seriously have to think about that, especially during like I was watching the England Wales game. Uh, so I think they played on Thursday last week at the Euro, uh, Euro Cup 2016 second stage match. And I mean, if you know, I'm sure 
by the time you're listening to this, you probably didn't watch it. You're not into soccer or football. Um, but if you watched it, I mean, to be honest, you should have seen those goals. I mean, they were not impressive. I didn't, I didn't find those goals impressive at all. Um, they were like just... I mean, I play football, non-professional. I saw it just kick about on the park. That was the kind of goal. The goals we scored were the type of goals the English team scored against Wales twice. I mean, it's just some kind of weird hooligan-style brute force levels of ping-ponging inside the penalty area until someone finally knocked it in. I mean, there was no grace, no style, just white knuckle, roll the dice, street level type scoring, unlike the Wales goal that actually had a touch of elegance to it. But even then, I've got to have to criticize Wales as well because fine, the, the Garrett Bale is like the talisman. Guy's really good. Scored his free kick. It's magnificent. But you can't rely on set pieces to, to win. I mean, that's you have to be really lucky to get set pieces and even more lucky to convert them into goals. So when Garrett Bale scored, I was like, okay, this looks good. But in the previous match they played, they also scored their first goal with a set piece and then some other chap knocked it in later. So, yeah, I mean, even that, there's a bit of an issue. But at least that's a fo- that scores better than the English team's performance. I mean, I was watching the game and I was like, I don't get it. I was, I was like, why aren't these guys good? I mean, individually, like these players, when they play for their clubs, like, you know, they're playing Manchester City, West Ham, uh, Manchester United, Everton, just across the, the Premier League, and they're really good. But you put them all together, and it's like they're afraid of playing. I wonder if maybe because they, they just get eviscerated by the English press every single time there's a major tournament, and there's all scandal after scandal about what happens here. And then I think those guys are just fucking scared out of their fucking minds that they, they just play it safe. And why they play it safe? I think at the same time, the, the fans are just fucking going crazy. It's like, what the fuck? And, you know, if you ever watch an England game, you just see them screaming like the national anthem. And I'm like, fuck it out. You know, what does she have to do with football? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, really, uh, the worst side looks to be the better team. They look to be the better team, but... They, like I said, they, they must also be able to score goals outside set pieces as they've done so far. I'm actually talking about football at length. <laughs> I thought I was rambling on about people actually fighting each other for football, right? I thought that was what I was doing. So hang on, let me get, let me try and get back to that. Uh, all right, cool. So uh, think about it. Uh, these dudes that go to war over, over a game of football, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. I find it ironic how uh, Russians and Russia and England have all this tension now uh, between their governments. It's ironic, really, because, I mean, before World War One and up until 1917, in any case, both countries are actually pretty much allies. Well, that was before this, um, what's his name? Is it Gregory Rasputin showed up and just single-handedly tipped over the monarchy to the point where open revolt was literally unavoidable. Um, and that kicked off, and then the Bolsheviks moved in, then you had Lenin, then you had socialism, then communism, blah, 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 and at some point, now you have Putin that's just running shit like a gangster, and he gives no fuck. But anyways, now we're here. I mean, fine, let's just let's just discount politics out of the equation entirely. Um, I don't understand why the peoples of both countries should be hostile towards each other, though. I mean, for the worst part, they aren't, I mean... For the most part, anyway, I mean, say for the football hooligans, I mean, really? I mean, I don't think they are. I mean, personally, I, I freaking love Russians, by the way. I mean, the dudes are crazy. They walk around with balls of titanium alloys of varying intensities and, you know, weight. And the women are insanely hot. No lie, I've never seen a not hot Russian woman. I, I'm not doing preference here. I'm just saying the women are hot. They really are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the men are fucking crazy. Yeah, just crazy dudes. I remember I was watching uh, a buddy of mine because he's into MMA. He sent me this link where there's this kind of MMA championships, but with a, with a twist. So the way it works is that you have teams of five. They just go at it. They just fight each other in the ring. And 
once someone gets knocked out, the winner just gets up and helps his other body fight the rest uh, of the other team. So, so it got to the finals where it was Russia versus Poland, and you you looked at the Polish dudes and you just saw these fucking freaks. These guys were just muscle bound, you know, crazy, almost gorilla type looking dudes, just buffed out and everything. And then you looked at the Russian team and they got to the finals and I was just like, fuck, you know, these guys were just skinny. They're just skinny dudes. And you could tell they gave no fuck. Because honestly, if you saw the comparison between these two groups and you saw the Russian team and the Polish team and you wondered how the Russian team got to the finals. And I knew they were going to lose just from just looking at both sides. I'm like, the Polish dudes are clearly stronger. They've been lifting weights, you know. But the Russian dudes, they didn't give a fuck. They went to war anyway. <laughs> The Russians, they don't fucking care, man. You don't fuck around with Russians. Um, but like I said, the dudes are fucking crazy. The women are hot, insanely hot. They're sharper. They're so sharp, those chicks. They're sharper than Japanese katanas. An exceedingly effective deep cover John Rambo type behind enemy lines mercenaries. I swear to God. I fucking swear. Those chicks are sharp. I mean, life in Russia is fucking hardcore. It is a fucking hardcore. I mean, yeah, and I, I sympathize with the people because, I mean, those guys have always been invaded. I mean, the Mongols invaded them. Uh, Napoleon invaded them. The Swedes at some point invaded them. Can you imagine that? At some point. And then uh, who else? Who else had to go? Uh, then there was World War One, where they suffered. Okay, they were invaded then. But the Germans tried to invade them and now they have this old tiff with America. So life, those guys, are, they've just had a hard life. You know, Russians. They just had a hard life. So, yeah, you kind of kind of have to expect that. So I remember I was talking to a colleague of mine and he mentioned something about how the, the Russian hooligans were actually roughing up English fans with proper MMA-style fighting moves. So weren't, they weren't just entirely random dudes that made up the, the whole Russian horde that was fighting English. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Fucking hell, yeah. I mean, I don't find that notion hard to believe. I mean, these are fucking Russians, man. Again, you don't fuck with Russians. They don't care. They don't give a fuck. Um, so I wouldn't put it past them, to be honest. And to be honest, again, I'm quite sure that there's probably a budget put aside by the Russian government just to train hooligans for situations like these. Shit. Maybe there's even a pseudo clandestine department within the Russian Ministry of Sports and whatnot. <laughs> just just like listen, uh Mr Putin with the we uh we need an additional seven million rubles to uh, fund uh, <coughs> project runway <laughs> Yeah it's a horrible horrible Russian accent. Um but yeah I'm sure like there's like just additional budgets, just a few million rubles every year that just you know, you get this normal people that just train with UFC style fights like techniques and jujitsu moves and whatnot. I mean, yeah, you don't fuck with Russians, you know. So it was kind of very interesting when I when I read the article about like English fans and Russian fans going at it because you know you just expect the English fans to go crazy because they always that's what they do. They get drunk, the team's shit, but they usually just try to have fun and then things get out of hand and they end up fighting the police of whatever country they visit. And yeah, dudes, Jesus Christ! And sometimes when I, when I hear about the fans causing such bullshit, that you know wherever they go, I usually tend to wonder. I mean, I wonder if these dudes would be better off just going at it in the medieval 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 battlefield somewhere. You know, I mean, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, the minimum criteria they already got that. I mean, these dudes are most of the time not civil; they don't behave like civilized people. Uh, they border on outright barbaric tendencies and tend to fancy hand-to-hand -hand combat. So yeah, why not? I mean, personally, I mean, I would just love to have these dudes transported back to the Battle of Hastings or some 1066 era and watch how many of them survive the first week <laughs> as they succumb to cholera and of dysentery. Or better yet, I reckon the, the next time football fans of any times want to go at it, um, maybe they should just like like okay so imagine in the recent game where they um you know they were fighting in the stadium so yeah i say evacuate all the staff evacuate the team evacuate everyone and just lock the stadium down so listen 
you guys sort this out, you know. Just keep fighting. And then when you guys are done, let us know. So we'll take you out. Just let them go at it, you know. Um, <laughs> at least that was one of the plans. And the other, yeah, and if they do in the streets, you just have, like, riot police just kettle both groups off in an area so they have no choice but to fight each other uh, until one side emerges victorious. It's like that uh, Mad Max Thunderdome movie that I probably really should see again. It's like two men enter, one man leaves. Two men enter, one man leaves, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, man. And I reckon that will most likely only happen once. I mean... Once it happens and that, you know, you kill them in and they just go at it and, you know, unfortunately, that's always a bad thing. It's like people could just die because fucking people are crazy. I think that's not going to happen after that. People are like, listen, we, we, we're we kind of killing each other over football now, you know. And I think if I recall, some um, dude uh, with his kid, he got set upon by, I don't know, maybe Russians and literally guys in a coma now, you know. Because I don't know if it was an actual person that was participating in fights, but he got caught out, got beaten up, and he's in a coma. And I think the reason why I saw that news story in the first place was the sheer fact that I think people are raising money, you know, to, for his treatment and whatnot, to support his family. God damn. Can you imagine that? I mean, so yeah. And it's just. And to be honest, why, why, why football anyway? I don't get it. Why is it football? It's not like it's a contact sport like rugby. I mean, I don't, I don't recall the last time rugby fans were actually going through countries, destroying everything in sight. I mean, and rugby is more violence. It's a fuckload more violence than football will ever be. And mostly only does such violent conduct manifest within English fan supporters. I, I don't get it. Honestly, I, I can think of no other football support group that goes fucking crazy over the sport. Or is it because the English are islanders? I don't know. Is it due to the cold weather, the stiff upper lip social repression of character that is still part of the culture since the Victorian era? Who knows? Or perhaps it's just a combination of everything. You know? I mean, it clearly can't be due to a superiority complex. Um, I mean, the guys live on an island. It's Great Britain, you know. Because at the present time, the English football team is just the pretty shit. So, yeah. Well, back to my earlier point about that inverse relationship between the insane levels of support from the fans and the subpar performance from the actual team itself. I reckon someone should just write a paper about this shit. I mean, I'd fucking read it. I know. Yeah, can you just imagine the Queen just cringing every single time? Those crazy nutbags, those fucking lunatics. They're just singing, God save the Queen. <laughs> They're just singing a national anthem, <laughs> waving the, the, the English flag before just charging at the opposition. <laughs> Imagine them just, God save the Queen. They're just making a fucking beeline for a riot police that's just in the phalanx formation, just shooting tear gas. And it's like, oh my God, they're just taking the tear gas, touching the back. Make us victorious <laughs> against this. <laughs> Pull his force. <laughs> oh man, I bet. And then, of course, go serve the queen. It's just like she was just be robbing temples in a palace right now. She's like, oh my god, it's a fu- fucking bunch of idiots right now. Ah, I bet she's used to it. She's like fucking nutcases, you know. Jesus Christ. It's like one of the exports of Great Britain, or England actually, fan club, English supporters, Did you, whatever, any football tournament in your country, yeah, they are coming and they're going to fuck shit up. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> yeah, I can just see it now. A bunch of idiots, to be honest. I can see it, yeah. I mean, dudes are just screaming out, God save the Queen, as they pile into a Russian train, Spetsnaz class, Krav Maga, no bullshit, dudes. <laughs> and, you know, the irony is like, if that ever happens, I, I'm just trying to imagine this whole fighting going on between English and Russian fans. And then the Russian fans are also just like, c- canting off some Gregorian monk level. T- rendition of their own national answers like, you know it's like <laughs> just like elbowing dudes on the ground 
<laughs> oh my god. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh god. Oh, what a bunch of fucking crazy psychos, man. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, you're fighting someone over football. I'm just going to let that sink in a moment. I'm just going to let that sink. Oh, God. Well, anyways, yeah, I think I'm going to stop here. Um, oh, man. I can't believe. I honestly can't believe I just talked about football the entire time. Anyways, thanks for listening. Um, I appreciate the, the viewership. If there's one or two of you, I appreciate it, no doubt. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so the Euro Cup's still on. It's pretty much up until early July. So, yeah, I think by the last the last week of the month. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it ends on the 3rd of July or something on a Sunday. So, that should be interesting. So <clears throat> I'll try not to talk too much about football in my next podcast. Maybe I would. Uh, I think I'm going to speak all day. She'll see if he has time so we can record one this coming week. And Dan is back from China. So I'm going to pick his brains on that. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get more people to come on this show. It's fun. I was thinking I'm going to ask. And it's pretty much crazy, but I have this idea of just asking one of these comedians I listen to if they want to do like a 30-minute thing. I mean, imagine the arrogance of me just asking that. But hey, you never know. But anyways, guys, thank you for listening to episode 14 of the Sounds Legit podcast. I'll think of a name for this. Uh, It's something that's going to be football-related for sure. But yeah, uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for listening, guys. And uh, yeah, take it easy, and I will speak to you soon. Okay? (laughs) Cheers. Bye-bye.